the number three spot. The Liberty transfer is the one to watch today, due up third in this inning. Carly Charles spins, and the first pitch misses low. We're underway at 1.05 p.m. Central Time. Game two of a three-game set between Oklahoma State and Iowa State. Two of the original Big 8 schools that will remain in the Big 12 even after the departures and additions next year. Carly Charles here. It's rare that she works behind early in the game. She's usually one really attacks the strike zone, as you see there. Poulard lays down a bunt and is thrown out by Carly Spellhog. McKenna Andrews covering first. Well-executed bunt defense by Iowa State. In pool yard yesterday, she shows bunt. Sometimes she swings away, sometimes has a ton of speed to show off. But Carly Spellhog attacked that very, very well, threw it from a low position, able to get the out. Rosie Davis at the plate now, the freshman second baseman. Takes a strike. Oklahoma State, a team that can hit with some power, wind directions blowing straight in today. Different than what we saw yesterday. Granted, wasn't much of a factor yesterday, but Oklahoma State going to need a hard ground balls and line drives today. And the power hitting is where Oklahoma State has done their damage this year. Yesterday, though, five hits, all singles for the Cowgirls. They're second in the Big 12 in both triples and home runs. Top five in doubles as well. There's a strike to... Making a one and two count on Davis. It's interesting. You, you mentioned just how much power this team hits with. And yesterday, not only was it just the singles that they were hitting, they were really unable to just string them together. There was no back-to-back -back hits in the game, unable to move runners who were getting on base. Yeah, five hits spaced across four innings. Two-two is hit foul up the third baseline. Davis this season, certainly part of the power hitting, nine doubles, six homers. 2-2 two -two is smacked foul and well out of play. And for Iowa State, Carly Charles, the lone upperclassman in this pitching staff, as you mentioned, has kind of been the consistent factor for Iowa State this year. But hats off to the young pitchers yesterday. It was Lauren Skirman and Jaden Ralston who shut down this Oklahoma State offense. Gives Charles a ton of momentum going into the game today. You mentioned her getting behind in the count early, Charles, uh, against Poulard, who then took a 2-0 pitch in grounded out on a bunt. Uh, Iowa State really did not get behind in counts yesterday. No, it was 0-2 counts, 1-2 counts, just one after another after another. They attacked the zone and forced Oklahoma State to put it in play. Still 2-2 two and two on Davis as she's fouled off four in a row. Heading into the ninth pitch of the at-bat, working Carly Charles early. Here it comes. Charles, a pitcher that does tend to throw up in the zone. A rise ball is a pitch that you'll see her throw throughout this game. For a pitcher who does throw up in the zone, perfect day to be thrown when the wind is blowing in. Ground ball up the middle. It's Andrews to spell hog this time. It was the other way around for out number one. That's out number two. Caroline Wong to bat with the bases empty. This is absolutely crucial for Iowa State, keeping Caroline Wong coming to the plate with nobody on base. They did a phenomenal job of it yesterday, and once again starting off the game in the same situation. Wong, the Liberty transfer, twice the Atlantic Sun player of the year. Definitely in the conversation for Another conference player of the year honor this year in arguably the best softball conference in the country. Yeah. 
tries Chases there. The high ball. Yeah, able to throw that rise ball effectively so far this first inning, getting Wong to chase after that pitch. Just jumps right out of the zone. Great pitching by Carly Charles. And she goes right back to it. Wong was ready for it that time. Knew what to watch for. Here's the one, two. Foul up the first baseline. Oklahoma State wearing basically a reverse of their uniform yesterday. It was black with orange pinstripes. Today, white with orange pinstripes. One, two. Didn't miss by much. Charles there attacking high in the zone. That ball really didn't jump out of it. So Charles thought she might have gotten a strike three call on that pitch. Two, two. This one touch higher than the last. Iowa State was wearing white shirts, red trousers, and white socks yesterday. Today it's red, white, red instead. The payoff. Soft fly ball caught by the shortstop Ranchez on her way to the outfield. One, two, three, go the Cowgirls in the first. It's Oklahoma State nothing. Iowa State coming up. With their strength and versatility, there's almost no job John Deere compact utility tractors can't handle. With their powerful diesel engines and auto connect system, these tractors make your job easier. And had a higher ERA as a result. She's cut that ERA in half this year. Here's Iowa State's starting lineup similar to yesterday. They do make some adjustments getting McKenna Andrews and Camille Marin into the lineup. Ashley Miner stays right where she was in the sixth spot yesterday. Drove in both of the Iowa State runs, including one with a solo homer. First pitch to Malaysia Ochoa is a strike from Rosenberry, the senior right-hander from Winchester, Virginia. Now Rosenberry has always been a pitcher who's been able to move her pitches this year, though. She's had a lot more command with those pitches, staying closer to the plate. You never want those spin pitches to be over the plate, um, but staying closer to the plate, getting a lot more hitters to chase after what they call to be her spinner pitch. Ochoa flies one to center field. Tim on the way back. She'll watch it go. Lead off solo blast for Malaysia Ochoa. Iowa State takes the lead in the first. They are carrying the momentum from yesterday. Three pitches into this game for Iowa State's offense. That ball flies over the 220 side in center field. Malaysia Ochoa, just her third home run of this season, but it was an absolute blast. Wind blowing in, apparently not a factor. Here's Angelina Allen, who takes high. Ochoa certainly has the power factor. Hit 12 home runs last year. A little bit slower pace this year, but... Just her third of the year. Yeah. I tell you what, I mean, the, this one's coming in at, at, at a pretty good pace, and that ball was absolutely crushed. To go dead center, I mean, I mean, she had it timed up completely perfect, got fully extended through the ball, and to start the game that way, such a tone setter for the game today. The 1-1 one -one to Allen is a strike on the inner edge. Allen continued her hit streak yesterday up to 10 games. with a double in Iowa State's sixth inning. She was the insurance run that came around to score. 
on that Ashley Minor bases loaded HBP. 2-2. Two -two. For Angelina Allen this year, it's really been, you know she's going to get on base. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> you can't get on base every single time, but at some point throughout this game, you know she's going to get on base. At some point throughout this game, you know she's going to make solid contact. Allen gets on base exactly half the time this year, 500 on base percentage. Takes low there. And oftentimes, you know, you can inflate that OBP with a lot of walks. Allen does walk a significant amount, but a lot of that is hits. She has an average of 452. Nice diving stop by the third baseman, Poulard, and it's in time. Outstanding play by Poulard at third base, able to leave her feet in quick enough to jump back up and get the speedy Angelina Allen at first base. See another look at it here. That looked like it could have been a single, but Poulard, the fast feet, able to make the play. And usually as a player, you're not going to convince the umpire. That was close. That was very <laughs> close. <laughs> Alicia Ranchez bats with the bases empty. Iowa State. In front, thanks to the solo shot from Malaysia Ochoa. Iowa State looking for a series victory today over number five, Oklahoma State. Iowa State able to pick up a win off of Oklahoma State now in each of the past three seasons. Swing and a miss by Ranchez. Rosenberry throws at a very fast pace. She moves quick between pitches, but she's got a lot of zip on the ball as well. You'll see Ranchez there just slightly behind that pitch, throwing it hard. Iowa State thought that they... We're behind Kilfoyle a little bit yesterday. It feels like you're seeing a little bit of increase in velocity from Rosenberry, who just missed the outer edge there. We'll see there. She takes a couple steps behind the mound, but it's within two or three seconds. She's right back on the mound, ready to go. Gets her first strike out of the day as Ranchez swings and misses. You'll see that pitch there just right off the plate on the outside corner, getting Ranches to chase. Very smart pitching by Rosenberry. Tiana Poole fouls off the first offering. I remember yesterday seeing Ochoa give some advice to the to Angelina Allen as, as she was on the way into the batter's box. Today you want to hear that advice for sure. Definitely. I mean, it's anytime you can have your players communicating with each other with what they saw, especially when your lefties are talking to your lefties, your righties are talking to your righties. Pitcher sequences are so similar to each other, especially at different points throughout the game. So communication amongst batters is huge. 0 2 to pool. Called strike three. Back to back punch outs for Ivy Rosenberry. But the Cyclone strike first. Solo homer for Ochoa. One to nothing heading to the second. BYU was not perfect in that game either. They put Oklahoma's leadoff runner on base in all seven innings, but Oklahoma unable to capitalize. And they fall to a Cougars team that finds itself near the bottom of the Big 12 standings. That's crazy. And, I mean, it was interesting. I was seeing post-game interviews from, from a lot of the games across the country. And Coach Patty Gasso had a post-game interview after that just saying, we don't have the pieces right now. We don't have the mm. pieces right now. We need to get it figured out. And I would imagine after yesterday's chaos, there's – there's a lot of teams that might be saying that right now. 
Carly Godwin leads off the second inning for Oklahoma State. And hits a line drive towards right field. Poole took a second to read that ball, but finds it, makes the catch. And that catch in right field, it doesn't always have to be pretty, but she was able to get the jump she needed to make the play. So here's a look at the top ten. Six of the nine teams that were in action yesterday lose, yeah. including two Big 12 teams. Just a crazy day of softball. And we'll see what uh, what today has in store for BYU and Oklahoma. That was game two of that. 13 to nine, Clemson able to put up a lot of runs on the number three team in the country. It's 2-0 and on Lexi McDonald. And she takes low and outside. Charles behind in the count, 3-0. and As Iowa State is in danger of surrendering what would be its first walk of the series. No walks in seven innings pitched yesterday for the Cyclones. And there's the first. That pitch there, very close to the zone. Iowa State, you put yourself in a situation now, possible double play ball. As you see this pitch here, just a little bit low and outside for Carly Charles. Michaela Wark will stand in, the designated player. And sees a strike. As a pitcher here, you think, okay, one walk, really not the end of the world. And it's not. It just is important, though. See how Carly Charles bounces back here. Minimize any damage. Keep the runners out of scoring position. Charles, that's just the 14th walk she's surrendered in inning number 53. She is a player that likes to pitch to contact, and this is an Oklahoma State team that likes to be aggressive. Here's a soft fly towards right field, and it's down in the infield. Andrews able to recover and throw out the lead runner in McDonald's. Wark reaches on fielder's choice. And Carly Spellhog, a very tough read here, but able to make the drop step to get to the ball. And I'm not sure if she actually ran into the runner or not. If she makes contact with the runner, that was an interference anyway, but able to recover and get the out at second base. So with two outs and a runner on first, it's Katie Lott. Ground ball to third, knocked down by Miner. Throw across is in time, and the inning comes to an end. A one-out walk goes nowhere. Iowa State remains in front. To anyone passing through our state, this might be the view they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is a homegrown renewable fuel. Corn is fed to pork, beef, poultry, and dairy so that we can enjoy delicious... We have a big line of people wanting pictures and autographs. Iowa State softball, the main event here, of course, with a one nothing lead in the bottom of the second inning. It'll be 5, 6, and 7 due up for the Cyclones, beginning with Carly Spellhawk. Spellhawk, you're working ahead in the count. Rosenberry continuing to work fast in the circle. Tell you what, that young Iowa State women's basketball team was fun to watch this year. Spellhog hits one hard, knocked down by Bloodworth, but she's not able to recover in time to throw out the speedy Spellhog, who is safe at first on a scoring decision. Bloodworth there. At shortstop, that was a hard hit ball. And they did call of, it a hit. Off of Spellhogs. <laughs> and I, I think that was the correct decision. This is an absolute shot that takes a bounce right up at her chest. And Bloodworth able to recover. And you have to think about 
60% of runners, she probably would have gotten at right. first base. Actually, probably more than 60%, probably more than 75, 80%. Yeah, Spellhawk certainly in the upper echelon of speed in softball. And here's the player that Oklahoma State just couldn't seem to get out yesterday, Ashley Miner. It's a high fly ball, right field in deep. It's into foul territory, and it's caught by Lexi McDonald. Spellhawk is safe at second. Tagging up, but a very close play, a good throw by McDonald. And yeah, McDonald played that very, very well, moving towards foul territory and smart base running. <laughs> Spellhawk knowing her speed here and tagging at first and actually just would have been safe anyway with the obstruction call by the third base umpire. But either way, she beat it out. McKenna Andrews, the batter now. Getting her first hacks of the weekend. Runner in scoring position for Iowa State. And she'll move to third on the ground out by Andrews. So two outs and a runner at third for Camille Marin. An opportunity, though, for Iowa State, another runner in scoring position. And Marin, a hitter for Iowa State, has the opportunity, has two doubles on the year, so can hit with some power. Checks her swing on a pitch that just dipped below the knees. Marin, two doubles, a pair of RBIs as well. And we'll see an early visit to the circle for Oklahoma State pitching coach Gary Eberly. No action in the cowgirl bullpen. You'd like to think that Oklahoma State's plan for the weekend is complete game for Kilfoyle on Friday. Check. You'd like to think that they want Rosenberry to go the distance today. And then probably Kyra Acock to go the distance on Sunday if they can get away with that i would say that's always their plan which is how dominant their pitching staff is but coach kenny kenny Gajewski said yesterday he's not scared to make changes if needed if he sees his pitcher struggling he's focused on one game at a time get the win at hand and Kilfo yesterday i mean it really it was the one home run and then in in the final at bat for iowa state the walk and a hit by pitch Marin takes outside, so two and nothing now on the right-handed hitting catcher. And takes low. And the visit to the circle did not help Rosenberry find the zone. At least not yet. This one fouled off. And Marin there just slightly behind that pitch, but in a great hitter's count right now, knowing that Rosenberry has to come back with something good at 3-1. and one. Or not, and she can take a walk. That works, too. Runners on the corners for the bottom of the Iowa State order. Olivia Wardlow does not get a ton of RBI chances. She has seven driven in on the year. And with a runner like Spellhog at thir third base, first and third situation here, you have a slapper up to bat. Iowa State's really trying to produce a run. So you have to wonder if they're going to try something on the bases in order to just get Spellhog in and see Wardlow lead off the next inning. If I'm Oklahoma State and you do see something going on in the base paths, you might just let Marin take second. 0-1. Oh, 
And Iowa State's kind of in a weird situation. You have Marinette first with no stolen bases on the year. But then you have Spellhog at third, who's one of the best stealers in Iowa State history. Marin, no stolen base attempts in her career as Wardlow swings and misses. You would have you would think that if Iowa State were going to get creative, they would have done so already. I would bet you it's coming this pitch. One, two. Slapped out towards left field and foul. Katie Lott had a beat on the ball, but it just kept drifting away from her. And if this is a ball here, I would expect Marin is going to be going on this pitch. Okay. Holding you to it. Do it. One, two. Fouled off again. She was running, though. <laughs> I know things. <laughs> <laughs> Rosenberry delivers. Slap towards short, picked by Bloodworth, and Wardlow is thrown out at first. So the Cyclone strand runners on the corners. They still lead heading to the third. <laughs> Number five, Oklahoma State. The Cyclones looking for the top top five series victory over Kenny Gajewski's Oklahoma State Cowgirls. It's been a great run for Kenny Gajewski, one that he hopes to continue four straight Women's College World Series for the Cowgirls and to make it five in a row. They're 34 and seven. Definitely an opportunity. And there's so much left to happen yet this season, but... I have a feeling all the NCAA regionals and super regionals especially are going to be crazy this year. It's going to be, it is a fun year in college softball, and I have no doubt it's going to continue into May. Bloodworth fouls this one off and is behind 0-2 as Carly Charles is picking up where Iowa State pitching left off yesterday. Five hits for Cyclone pitching, but no runs and no walks. 0-2 is fouled off. Today, Charles has yet to allow a hit. She has walked a batter, and she's continuing to keep the Cowgirls off the board. For this Cowgirls offense, I mean, they need to just find a way to produce, A, get people on base, but when they're getting them on base, they need to get them moving whether it's playing some small ball, I mean, just a little more strategic hitting of hitting to the right side when you get runners in second base. Whatever it is, they need to find a way to produce some action offensively. The one-two. Rise is too high. Bloodworth, Tim Poulard due up in this third for the Cowgirls. This one popped up shallow left field. Allen runs toward the line to make the catch. And that's something you'll see a lot when Carly Charles is pitching. Not uncommon for that ball to fly sky high with hitters getting underneath her upward spin. But Angelina Allen able to play it perfectly. Claire Tim, the center fielder, comes to the dish. Good season at the dish for Tim this year. 327 average, 14 driven in, four doubles, four homers, a pair of triples. She scored 28 times. This one fouled off. Very common in college softball and in baseball as well, just using that nine spot in the batting order as more of a second leadoff hitter. We're seeing a lot more teams go with a little bit more power at the top of their lineup, and the, the true just super fast person is ending up in that nine spot. 
Here's one smacked out to left center, a diving catch. Malaysia Ochoa lays out to steal extra bases from Claire Tim. That right there is the reason Malaysia Ochoa was all Big 12 last year, pre-season all Big 12 this year. That was amazing. Ball was just slicing away from her the whole time. Leaves her feet and records the second out of the inning. Here's Jillian Poulard, who hits a ground ball to first. Spellhog taps the bag, a quick one, two, three frame for Iowa State defensively, and they stay in the lead. Hey, you seeing this? Wait. Where's the dish? There ain't one. You're telling me you can get direct TV. What happened throughout the game, and there truly are no words. When a play like that happens, your jaw just drops. Just full layout in the center field. A complete momentum change. Iowa State with three hits on the day. Rather, two and a walk. Ochoa's solo home run has set the tone. And Oklahoma State has yet to fight back. For Iowa State right now, really just an opportunity to build on. You have a defensive play like that. Energy is high in the dugout. You're at the top of your order. Middle of the game, such an opportunity for the team. Ochoa with a looping liner out to left that Lott gets underneath. First down of the inning. Looping liner to left for Lott. Couldn't think of any other L words to say there, though. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Angelina Allen. Takes a strike. She was robbed of at least a single. Probably just a single. It was kind of a softly hit ball on that grounder between third and short in the first inning. Jillian Poulard laid out, made a nice defensive play. You know, they say a lot of baseball and softball players are just very superstitious. Mm -hmm. And I know Iowa State has a ton of bats in that dugout and in their clubhouse. How funny is it that Ochoa and Allen choose to use the exact same bat? <laughs> <laughs> Ochoa uses it and leaves it there, and Allen comes up, picks it up, and uses the same bat. There you go. I bet they have 20 bats in their clubhouse and in their dugout that are that exact same size, but <laughs> <laughs> they use the same one. Maybe even the same model, I think. No, literally the exact same bat. Yeah, Ochoa yeah. uses it, drops it, right. and Allen picks it up and uses the same one. 2-2 two, two is outside. I'm saying that they probably have other bats that are the exact oh, same yeah. model. I'm telling I you, they that, do. <laughs> uh, I think I'm seeing Ranch has swinging one that yeah. looks very, they're, very they're, similar. They're all swinging the same bat. <laughs> <laughs> they all swing the carbon. Here's the payoff. Line drive. Caught. They don't call it the hot corner for nothing. Jillian Poulard has robbed two base hits now from Allen. Poulard here able to just catch that right over her shoulder. Sees it all the way in. It's amazing the athleticism of third baseman to just make that play look so routine. Ranchez gets a barrel to the ball, but flies it foul. It's a good thing it was dropped in the bullpen. There was somebody there with an Oklahoma State jersey and a glove, but it was dropped. That would have been a you know one for the umpires to rule on. Savannah banana rules. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Ranchez looking to bounce back after a strikeout in the first inning. Typically a very hot bat for Iowa State.
She's behind in the count here, one and two, as Rosenberry looks for her first clean frame of the day. Struck out a pair of batters in the first inning, did Rosenberry, the Virginia Tech transfer. Ranch has just consistently half a second behind at this point. Rosenberry throws it hard, and there's, I mean, there's an art to being able to shorten up your swing just a tiny bit without doing it too much to affect your mechanics. And Rosenberry is staying on that outside corner, staying away from Ranches. And this time when she does go in, she puts it too low to handle, but Ranches is able to lay off. From righty to righty, the 2-2. Fly ball, this one will stay between the foul lines. Caught by McDonald to end the inning. One, two, three, go the Cyclones in the third. Still one nothing heading to the fourth. We want a trimmed tree and an unfractured coccyx. Sadly, we can't have it all, except at Sport Clips, where we check in with the pros in men's hair and tote. Big contingent of what they're calling Lexi's Fan Club. If you can read the small print on that shirt, there's much bigger print on the back that says Lexi and number eight there here. Turn on Lexi Kilfoyle, who pitched a great game yesterday, but was tagged with the loss. She said her dad never misses a game. Yeah, I, when I saw all the shirts, I'm like, where did this Lexi fan club come from? Which is super fun, super cool to watch and talk to folks with Oklahoma State. And they said, no, her dad never misses a game. Her family travels well and family and friends just out to watch her play. She's not scheduled to play today. She may have to come in in relief if it gets to that point for Oklahoma State. Or you never know, she might grab a bat. She, she does hit the ball pretty well. Maybe we'll see her as a pinch hitter later on. Who knows? Rosie Davis takes low, and the count moves to two and one. It'll be Davis, Wong, and Godwin, two, three, and four in the Oklahoma State lineup. A lineup that is looking for its first run of the series. Shut out 2 nothing yesterday. And... Shut out in the first three innings so far today without a hit yet today. They have been walked once. Other than that, no base runners for Charles, who's 3-1, finds the zone. Ooh. I love the pitch selection there. 3-1 pitch, not scared to go to an off speed right over the plate. Expect Davis to be a little bit more aggressive seeing a pitch like that. Here's the payoff, and it's ball four. So a leadoff walk for Oklahoma State. They have their leadoff runner aboard for the first time. And the very dangerous bat of Caroline Wong and Iowa State coach Jamie Pierkerton has decided now is the time to make the pitching change. They'll go to Jaden Ralston, who came in in relief yesterday and was excellent. See if she can repeat that performance today. We'll let her get warmed up. out in yesterday's action. We'll see if Ralston can continue her momentum in relief today. Comes in with a runner on first and nobody out. Oklahoma State looking for its first hit of the day and its first runs of the weekend with the batter that they probably view as their best chance for either one of those in Caroline Wong. A yeah, very dangerous situation here opportunity Oklahoma State with a runner on base with no out so the ability here 
to just move her around playing some strategic softball. And for Iowa State, as you mentioned, Ralston was finding the zone yesterday. She was attacking the zone. She was playing with fire. In a conversation with the coaches, they said she was ready the entire game. She was just itching to get in the game. She was pacing up and down the dugout, waiting for her opportunity to come in yesterday. And she made the most of it. See if she can repeat that performance today. Facing the heart of the Oklahoma State lineup with a runner already aboard. But she certainly wasn't scared of the moment yesterday. The 1 0 to Wong is lined towards center field and down. Oklahoma State with its first hit of the contest. Two aboard, nobody out in the top of the fourth as Oklahoma State is threatening. Caroline Wong there taking that off speed pitch, driving it into right center field, just very solid piece of hitting. Especially in a day like today, you're looking to produce runs. You're not looking to take some huge swings. Move base to base. Carly Godwin awaits and takes high. A line out her first time. This time misses outside, does Ralston. Godwin 0 for 3 yesterday. 0 for 1 so far today. But a huge opportunity for the Cowgirls here. And she's worked a 3-0 count. And unlike yesterday, Ralston here working behind on the hitter. Needs to settle in a little bit, attack the zone. Iowa State defense, middle infielders playing for a double play ball here. That one finds the zone. Still a hitter's count here for Godwin. Pops it up. Right side, foul territory. Andrews makes the catch, throws to third. In time, a double play. Wow. McKenna Andrews on this play tracks this ball that's being carried by the wind across the field. Tiana Poole in right field saying, throw it to third, throw it to third. Ashley Miner able to take the tag. Kenny Gajewski says, we are reviewing that right now. So that play under further review. But the call on the field is out at third. Godwin certainly out on the foul pop-up caught by Andrews. And we'll see if Rosie Davis is safe or out at third. And it definitely appears the throw got there in time. But I don't know if the tag was down. That angle, it's impossible to tell whether or not the glove hit any part of her arm. It was down, but her arm may have slid to the outside of it. It's hard to tell. Could have done that, or it's part of that wrist guard could have caught the glove. I Both Davis and Coach Kenny Gajewski very adamant that she was in there safe. Let's see if we get any closer look here. And I think, like I said, I think the tag is definitely down before her hand is on the base. It's just a matter of does that tag actually make contact with the runner? Yeah, they appear to be right next to each other. Yeah. And from the umpire's point of view there, I can see where the initial... And this angle that we're seeing is not the exact angle that the umpires have either. They're using the fixed cameras that are on the field. So they might have a different look at it. They do have a different look at it. Whether or not it's a better look, I don't know.
Umpires in today's contest, by the way, Jonathan Hand at third, Riley Cobb at first, behind the dishes, David Lee. It was Jonathan Hand with the out call initially. Has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn. And that's that's part of it, right? Can you the, indisputably prove that she wasn't tapped? Yeah, the call the call on the field is huge in this situation. In a bang bang play like that, and that's I think why this this replay is taking so long. They're probably seeing angles where they truly cannot tell what the call should be. I think if you're starting this review from a from nothing. If the only thing you're looking at is the video, you say, okay, she's probably safe. But that's not where this happens. You have to have 100% no doubt proof to overturn the call. What a critical call in this game. No kidding. Oklahoma State starting to get some momentum. And... It'll continue with a safe call. It'll all but evaporate with an out call. Score it four to five on the double play. Two outs and a runner on first for Lexi McDonald. And this Iowa State defense who has just struggled to find consistency all year these last two days, I mean, just some web gems of plays that we've been seeing inning after inning. One zero pitch to McDonald is a strike. We did see an error by Iowa State in, I think, the first inning yesterday. But after that, it's been real clean defense. It was the second inning. Since then, very, very good defense on both sides. Oklahoma State has not committed an error all weekend. Ralston there working up in the zone, mixing up speeds just a little bit, able to catch McDonald off balance. It's one and two on the left-handed hitter. She walked the first time. Ralston trying to work out of a jam. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Oklahoma State puts two runners on with nobody out, and they cannot capitalize. They're still scoreless through 11 innings of this series. Lay the foundation for your future while helping build Florida's tomorrow with a career in road and bridge construction. Dive into a role with stock. What you need in stock with service so good it's guaranteed. This is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Halfway through this game, Iowa State in front, one to nothing, and this is how their games normally go. They four innings as they have today. Shut out Oklahoma State through the first eleven innings of this series. And uh, Iowa State does well at outscoring its opponents in the final three innings of contests, which they did yesterday. Uh, got a run in the fifth and a run in the sixth. But today, got the run early. Have been relatively shut down since. Just one more hit since that solo home run by Ochoa. As Oklahoma State, specifically Ivy Rosenberry, has found her footing as the game has gone along. But... Iowa State's pitching and defense has kept its footing and kept its momentum from the first inning of the first game. This Iowa State team, and it's been historically under Coach Pinkerton as well, they are very, very scrappy when the game is close. They love, I mean, they feed off the energy of the crowd off of each other when it's a one nothing ball game, a 0-0 zero to zero ball game. They play really, really well when the game is close, and that's been a big thing this season is just not letting games get too far away from them early. 
Poole takes this one inside out and flies out to right field. Rosenberry has now retired five in a row. Spellhog has Iowa State's last hit, the fifth-year first baseman, Carly Spellhog. Singled to lead off the second inning. Iowa State has just one walk since, or its lone base runner since then. Spellhog, her last time around, was able to reach third. Almost was an opportunity for Iowa State for another run. They were trying to get something to happen with her on third. As she reached, uh, reached on an infield single to lead off the second, went to second on a foul fly out to right field, got to third on a ground out. And here she's struggling to catch up with Rosenberry. That's really been the story for Iowa State today. Malaysia Ochoa certainly caught up, got ahead, and extended through that fastball of Rosenberry to push it over the 220 wall in center field. But other than that, Iowa State has had trouble tackling the fireballs thrown by Rosenberry today. I'd like to see Iowa State hitters just shorten up a little bit, and that's exactly what Spellhawk's going to do here. She's going to change her approach, see the ball better out of the hip. She fouls this one off. Two two, popped up towards us and behind us and out of play. And you have to imagine after the off-speed pitch here, Rosenberry's going to come back with some speed, trying to get Spellhog caught behind the ball. She is behind it, but enough to stay alive. That's all that matters. Sometimes a foul ball is just as valuable. If that's a pitch you know you're not going to hit with power, being able to foul it off is an incredible skill to have as a ball player. Here's one hit sharply up third, but Poulard gets it on one hop and throws out the speedy spell hog for the second out of the inning. And placement of that hit almost the exact same as her first at bat, the ground ball in that 5-6 hole. But Poulard there, able to stay on her feet, makes a huge difference. Ashley Miner with two outs and the bases empty. Iowa State has scored three runs in this series, two of them on solo homers, as Miner gets a hold of this one but gets a little bit too much air underneath it out to right center field. It's Claire Tim that makes the catch to retire the side. Cyclones have gone seven up, seven down over the last two and a third, but they still lead it going to the fifth. Build your future and Florida's tomorrow with a job in road and bridge construction. Complete management is expected for the love of football, for the love of La Liga. In a pitcher's duel, don't forget about the defense. Both oh. teams showing off a little bit today. I was going to say Malaysia Ochoa there. I'm still stunned. Angelina Allen there. Poulard able to field it to the diamond to get the out after review for Iowa State. We've seen great defense in all 11 innings of this series. Both a real key for Iowa State, a team that is last in the Big 12 in terms of fielding percentage, they commit the most errors of any Big 12 team. That certainly bit them a little bit last weekend against Kansas. It wasn't the whole story, but when you start committing errors and those balloon into runs, then like you're talking about, the game gets not so close anymore. Maybe you lose some focus and they get some runs somehow else. But Iowa State has been extremely focused with these two close games to open this series against a top five opponent. Just as any softball or baseball would, coach would say, hitting is contagious. 
errors are also contagious mm -hmm. in, in just the opposite manner. It's tough when, when your team is struggling defensively. At the end of the day, this is Big 12 softball. They're all great at defense, but it, it, it's tough mentally to, to bounce back after an error. Three and one now on Michaela Wark, who reached on an odd fielder's choice her first time up. Swings through this one. She popped it up on the infield the first time, but neither Spellhog nor Andrews could get there. The runner, though, that was on first couldn't really leave the bag until it had dropped and she was thrown out at second. 3-2 misses outside, and Michaela Wark is aboard. So for the second straight inning, Iowa State walks the leadoff batter. Three walks now for the Cyclones in this contest. The first by Jaden Ralston. And Kenny Gajewski will go to the lineup card and bring in a pinch runner. It'll be Taylor Anderson at first base. Anderson, four for five in stolen bases this season. See if they decide to get her running. For Oklahoma State right now, I think they'll try just about anything to get the offense going. It's a bunt here, and it's a successful sacrifice. Anderson moves to second. Katie Lott retired. Score it five to four. And I love the call there. I'm typically on the approach with softball. I want to see power. I want to see the big hits. But after 11 scoreless innings, they need to produce a run. I love the call there. The sacrifice bunt. You have a very fast runner now at second base. And two hitters who have gotten out both times their first at-bats, but have hit it to the outfield. But they'll pinch hit for Bloodworth and bring in Macy Graff instead. Macy Graff also pinch hit in yesterday's contest. And she takes a strike. Graff 0 for 1 yesterday. Lined out. Three hits. In 19 at bats this season, gets on base nearly 50% of the time, 484 on base percentage, 11 walks this season. Another reason to go to her, just get people on base like you're talking about. Get them on base, and you, I mean, you have Tim on deck, a 327 hitter, and then you're at the top of your order. A great opportunity for Oklahoma State. Three straight misses by Jaden Ralston after opening the at-bat with a strike. It's a hitter's count for Macy Graff. Oklahoma State's base runner came via the walk. They could get another one here. And a walk right now just as valuable as a hit. Just get yourself on base. It is low for ball four. Two runners on for Oklahoma State as they look for their first breakthrough of the series. The Iowa State defense going to come in and talk to Jaden Ralston here, get their pitcher back on track. Both, both Oklahoma State runners reaching through a walk this inning. In the bullpen, it looks like the southpaw Aziza Rodriguez is getting warm. The only southpaw we have the potential to see in this series. Oklahoma State does have one on its roster in Sailor Davis, but she has not pitched this year. And defensively, a tough out. So Tim is really a triple threat at the base. She's got speed. So it'll be interesting here to see if Oklahoma State Sticks with some more of the small ball or swings away. Tim robbed of what would have been Oklahoma State's first extra base hit of the series. 
on that diving catch by Malaysia Ochoa. Ralston getting a little jumpy in the circle. And time called here as Kate Sinnott will head to the circle. Simply an opportunity to calm down Ralston a little bit. Yeah, it, it's frustrating as a pitcher when you're when your stuff's just not working for a few pitches in a row. So sometimes all it takes is a is a conversation, as you mentioned, Iowa State did have Aziza Rodriguez up and going in the bullpen. She appears to be ready to go now. But Coach Kate Sinnott's going to talk this through with Ralston. And keep the ball with her. So two aboard for Oklahoma State, including the speedy Taylor Anderson at second. Claire Tim with both speed and power at the plate right now. There's a strike and a quick throw by Camille Marin. Just right at her shortstop, Ranches. Making sure that Anderson not getting too comfortable getting far <laughs> off the base at second. Back-to-back -back strikes for Ralston to even up the count. And Ralston, a great job. After that timeout call, just attack the zone. The 2-2. Two -two. Called strike three. Wow. Three strikes in a row. <laughs> Catches Tim looking at all three. Huge second out for Iowa State as they try to keep the lead intact. Jillian Poulard has grounded out both times and takes high on the first pitch. Poulard yesterday 0 for 3, today 0 for 2. Tried to reach by a bunt in the first inning. This one just off the outer edge, maybe a touch low. Another hitter's count for Oklahoma State as they try to take advantage. A completely different situation, though. One out versus two outs with runners on first and second. Right now, you're just close to space. That's all you're thinking. Get the ball to the closest base if you're Iowa State and if you're Oklahoma State. Now you're not looking as much at, hey, how can we move some runners? Now we're looking at who can get a big hit. Lard fouls this one off. Ralston a strike away from getting out of the jam of her own creation. A pair of walks in this inning has been Oklahoma State's best offense. They have just one hit in the game. Home plate umpire here, David Lee, giving Camille Marin just a little bit of extra time after that foul ball off the mask. Always appreciate that as a catcher. Austin back to the rubber for the 2-2. Two -two. Line drive, right center field. One hops the wall. One run in for Oklahoma State. Here comes the second without a throw. Two run double with two strikes and two outs for Poulard. And the Cowgirls in front for the first time this weekend. And Jillian Pouliard there is the exact momentum booster that they need. And both umpires are going to be going to replay on this to see if the runner at first base, in fact, left early. It's a huge hit for Poulard. It's the first extra base hit of the weekend for Oklahoma State. The first runs they've had. It's Poulard's first double of the season. 
And here's the chance to look at if she left early. I don't think so. This is a new rule in college softball. You are able to review if runners leave the base early, going into that bat, very fast runners on the bases for them. What may have looked like they were leaving early, some runners just start a little bit behind the base, but it's worth a check. And you have to, as a coach challenging it, pick the runner that you're looking at. Correct. And it appeared he pointed at the runner at first base. I thought so, yes. But if it is overturned, it would wipe both runs off the board. Be the third out of the inning. I don't see it likely to be overturned from this look. And this is the look from right behind home plate, which should be the exact view that the umpires have. And it's when the ball leaves the circle, you're it's, able to leave the base. It's when the ball leaves the pitcher's hand. And they are taking a very long look at this. Has the potential to be a huge call. But I think it probably stands. Oklahoma State finally gets the timely hitting it's been looking for all series long. The extra base hitting it's been looking for all series long. As we mentioned, just going into that bat, who's going to be the one that steps up and gets the big hit? That can change absolutely everything in a game and in a series. Oklahoma State takes the lead. The call upheld. And still a threat with a runner in scoring position and two outs for Rosie Davis. Davis walked in the fourth inning, grounded out in the first. And after that walk in the fourth, was on second base during that foul pop-up, got thrown out trying to advance to third on that nice double play by McKenna Andrews. Ralston right now continuing to work just around the zone. She's lost a little bit of the jump that she usually has in the circle, going with the rise ball there. Great pitch to get out of the inning. Miner throws out Davis, and the side is retired, but not before Poulard's two-run double to give the Cowgirls the lead. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments that are shared. We all benefit. Innovate at Iowa State. Ivy Rosenberry now in position for the win. Four innings, just two hits allowed and none since the second. She has set down seven batters in and will face off against the bottom three in the Iowa State order here in the fifth inning. As the Cyclone fans get done with their Fifth inning stretch, which at Cyclone Sports Complex is not to take me out to the ball game, but is instead to Red Foo's Juicy Wiggle, a fan favorite in Ames. In McKenna Andrews' stead, it is Tatum Johnson. And Ivy Rosenberry, aside from the third pitch of the game, has been nearly perfect. Right. So she has really settled in, seems to have complete control over this game. 
Tatum Johnson getting her second pinch hit opportunity of the weekend. The left-handed hitter waits and takes outside. I mentioned it yesterday, and it continued yesterday as Johnson drew a walk in her lone plate appearance. She doesn't have very many at-bats, but has 14 walks. 25 at-bats, and in addition to that, 14 drawn walks. Just find a way on base. Here's a ground ball weekly hit up the middle. The shortstop Bloodworth has enough time to throw out Johnson. Make it eight in a row retired by Rosenberry. And again, it just seems Rosenberry truly has complete control over this game. She seems to have really settled in. She seems comfortable in the pitches that she's throwing and has not gotten really any hard contact from these Iowa State hitters in a few innings. First pitch to Camille Marin, misses outside. Another one just off the plate away. Marin is a hitter, you mentioned it, that can do damage. Pair of doubles this season. Three doubles and a homer last year in limited at bats. Pops this one up foul. And Iowa State all of a sudden playing from behind for the first time in this series. Here's a fly ball to right center. Tim makes the catch. Two outs for Olivia Wardlow. Marin, by the way, was the last batter to reach for Iowa State with a walk in the second. So the streak of retired batters extends to nine in a row for Rosenberry. And Oklahoma State will, as they did yesterday against Olivia Wardlow, bring in a fifth infielder as Claire Tim, the center fielder, is playing just to the right of the second base bag. You see her number 18 in the screen there. This defense knows Wardlow is going to try to use her speed to get on. She tries to go for a power slap there, but placed perfectly is <laughs> the left fielder lot. Ten in a row sent down by Rosenberry and Oklahoma State all of a sudden in control. And longer. More new sandwiches and salads. More in For America's future, there is one constant. Marines. bit of wind today but otherwise where else would you rather be on a day like today but the ballpark great game in front of us today with some great weather Oklahoma State will send its heart of the order here in the sixth inning but not just well played softball but competitive it's been a, a fun start to this series not only the upset win yesterday but the first five innings today as well both these teams I would say especially Iowa State just has kept it very close. Both teams clean defensively. And for Iowa, or excuse me, Oklahoma State now, you just have a feeling last inning may have been a turning point for them with Pula Yards double. I mean, you just have a feeling, a gut feeling here that these hitters are going to start stringing, stringing some stuff together. Sunny and 81 in Ames today. Somewhat of a rarity for the second weekend in April. We're only, what, less than four weeks removed from a series cancellation due to snow. One, two to one. Rise ball misses high. Here's one thing that I've noticed today. I, I was reading about Oklahoma State, and they call their orange America's brightest orange. I feel like in the cloudless sky, the bright sun, those helmets are shining pretty brightly today. Ashley Miner makes the catch. I was going to say, looking at those helmets, I 
I would have to agree with that. It's a lot of orange. Those, yeah, those shirts, certainly very bright. That giant foam cowboy hat in the front row there, very bright. Certainly brighter than the other orange in the conference, Texas's burnt variety. I think the helmets, though. The helmets take yeah. the cake. Oh, yeah. The sun's just reflecting off them. You see it there on the top of the noggin of Carly Godwin. Lined out and popped into foul territory in what turned into a double play. Those are her two at-bats today. Godwin hitting north of 340 coming into this, just south of 350 coming into the series, but she's 0 for 5 in Ames so far. This one lofted softly to shallow center. It's the shortstop Ranches to make the catch. Ralston this inning showing a little bit of frustration in the circle about not getting some pitch calls, but she's continuing to throw at these hitters' hands and two hitters in a row now. She's induced weak contact off the inside of the bat of these Oklahoma State hitters. Tia Warsop bats and is thrown out just as quickly as I could read her name. Three up, three down go the Cowgirls in the sixth inning. With features you won't find on Honda CRV, Nissan Rogue, or Toyota RAV4, the Hyundai Tucson puts the other guys in their place. Namely, for a while we were calling this game the Malaysia Ochoa game, Allie. Third pitch into her at bat in the first inning. She drives it over the center field wall, but it was later in the game, her work in front of the center field wall. Look at this diving grab go into her glove. Perhaps two of the most defining plays of the game from Iowa State's perspective until Oklahoma State took the lead with a two-run, two-strike, two-out double in the fifth inning. So Ochoa trying to continue her momentum today, one for two with that home run. Ivy Rosenberry has put together quite the momentum for Oklahoma State, retiring 10 batters in a row. Finds the outside corner there. Rosenberry, so, I would say, has been the game changer for Oklahoma State today. Poulard's double, definitely a highlight of the game, but Rosenberry has been the one to truly just settle this game in and give her team a chance offensively. Tia Warsop, by the way, remains in the game in center field. Switching places with Claire Tim in right. Here's a line drive out to left field and down. It'll roll past Katie Lott and get to the wall. Ochoa to second. Iowa State has two extra base hits, both off the bat of Malaysia Ochoa. Have yourself a day here. Malaysia Ochoa drives that thing opposite field in the top hop. Goes right underneath the glove of Lot. And while Ochoa has been the most dangerous hitter of the day, Angelina Allen has been Iowa State's most dangerous hitter of the season. Ochoa climbs to second in program history with her 52nd career double, her 13th of the year. But Allen will come to the plate in a huge spot. You said yesterday in a similar situation, she was 0 for 2 in the sixth inning, and you said she'll find a way to get on base somehow today. I think she's going to get on base here. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be the way she likes to get on base. <laughs> if you're Oklahoma State here, the smart thing to do is not throw anything over the plate. You look at the upcoming hitters behind Allen right now, Allen is the most dangerous bat Iowa State has. She's up with runners in scoring position. You need to be smart. That first one nowhere near the strike zone. 
well upstairs. Looked a bit outside as well. Allen has been robbed of two hits today, ultimately. Both by Jillian Poulard. The third baseman had a nice sliding stop on a ball that looked like it might get through the hole between third and short back in the first inning and caught a screaming liner off the bat of Allen in the third. Pollard's been fun to watch at third base today. Really has had some outstanding plays against this Iowa State offense. It's 3-0 and on Allen. And she takes a strike. Hitters count for the left-handed batter. The 3-1. Line foul. I didn't expect Rosenberry to see that much of the plate with that pitch. I don't think Allen did either. A little bit behind that pitch. Out of Rosenberry's hand. It's full. On the best hitter in Iowa State's lineup. The payoff. Line drive left field, a base hit. Ochoa stops at third, Allen to first. Runners on the corners and nobody out as Iowa State looks to get back in front. As I mentioned earlier in this game, you are not going to keep Angelina Allen's back quiet this entire game. Going opposite field, both her and Ochoa making the left fielder work, putting themselves on the corner for the heart of the lineup. And Oklahoma State's infield getting signs from the dugout as to where to position themselves. They're all in, making sure that the run can't score on a ground ball. Huge at bat here for the Cyclones. Also for Iowa State right now, you have two runners on base that are threats. With no outs, you really want to see your three, four hitters put the ball in play. But if needed, Allen and Ochoa are capable of making something happen. Branch has 0 for 2 today, a strikeout and a flyout. 0 for 3 yesterday, looking for her first hit of the series. There is action in the Oklahoma State bullpen. Catherine Ogg warming up the 2-1. Chopped up the middle. Ochoa comes home, and Oklahoma State turns a double play. Megan Bloodworth steps on second and throws to first. Two outs in the inning, but the run scores to tie the game at two. A situation you look at here for each team, for Iowa State, you tie the game back up on Oklahoma State's end. You've cleared the bases. No RBI there for Ranchez. And Tiana Poole takes strike one. Pool 0 for 2 today, a strikeout and a flyout. And now behind in the count, nothing and 2. Due up for Oklahoma State, 6, 7, and 8. Likely Michaela Wark, Katie Lott, and Megan Bloodworth. 0 2. This is outside. I say likely Michaela Wark. It's her spot in the order. She was pinch run for the previous inning and as the designated player doesn't necessarily have to re-enter until the at bat. One two is weakly poked to the right side. The second baseman Davis makes the play and retires the side. Iowa State ties it up. A pair of hits in the inning and a run scoring double play. Tickets are on sale now for the high V Indy Car Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th. See Luke Combs. We've always been greater than 12.
Iowa State looking for its first series win over a ranked opponent. Since last year here at Cyclone Sports Complex, it was Baylor, the ranked team, before Camille Marin did some damage with the bat. Yeah, Marin driving that ball out into right center field. A very fun game. And as you mentioned, a ranked opponent series win for Iowa. Trying to avoid that fate today. Here's a high fly ball foul. But had home run distance off the bat of Mikhail Wark. Wark just hit that one onto the practice soccer field <laughs> behind the softball field here. A monster shot just foul. The 0 1 is hit up first. Nice play on one hop by Spellhog. She touches her own bag. Carly Spellhog, such a sure glove for Iowa State at first base. Able to play that very well. Work hits with some power. I mean, that ball's coming at you fast. Defensively for Iowa State, too, a new catcher as Maddie Knowles into the game behind the dish. Katie Lott at the plate. Takes outside against Jaden Ralston, who did allow both the runs. Is no longer on the hook for the loss after her Cyclone hitters tied the game in the sixth. Trying to keep it tied going to the seventh. Lot 0 for 1 today. Grounded out in the second. Successfully sacrificed in the fifth. And takes a strike there. 2 and 1 on the right handed hitter. That one downstairs. Hitters count. For Katie Lott, hitting in the 240 ballpark this season. Ralston right now working behind these Oklahoma State hitters the past couple innings. Still finding a way, though, to get these hitters to get themselves out. As a pitcher, I mean, that's such a craft when you're ahead in account to still be able to throw a ball with enough spin. As I said, getting the hitters to get themselves out, hitting weak ground balls or pop-ups. Payoff pitch. Check swing. She did not go. Katie Lott draws a walk. And that has certainly been a bugaboo for Iowa State pitching this season. No walks yesterday by the Cyclone staff, but five in this game today, including three from Jaden Ralston. Substitution here for Oklahoma State. They'll bring in Hayden Sokolowski to run. And it's Megan Bloodworth. Shows bunt, pulls back on a pitch that misses low. How do you feel about bunting with one out? With the part of their lineup that they're at, I mean, I like it. It's They have a ton of speed at the bottom of their lineup. Pulls back the bunt this time on a pitch that gets away from Knowles. It's a wild pitch that moves Sokolowski into scoring position. Two and oh, on Bloodworth. Swings away, pops it up shallow center. It's Ranchez, the shortstop for out number two. And once again, a situation there, Ralston's down in the count getting a little bit frustrated with some of the pitches she's throwing, but able to bounce right back and able to get the Oklahoma State hitter, Bloodworth, to hit a weak pop-up to Ranches. 
Claire Tim struck out in a high pressure situation her last time up. She swings through the first offering from Ralston. But struck out watching three straight pitches. Here she's swinging the bat. Tim 0 for 2 today. Let's pitch downstairs. At Tim's last at bat, she went up 3 0. And then there was a pitching conference where Coach Kate Sinnott came out, talked to Ralston, and she just threw three darts in a row right into the zone. Tim takes outside. She was on the bases once yesterday, singled. One for three yesterday, 0 for two today. A hit here could be the difference. As Oklahoma State tries to take the lead in the final regulation frame. This one fouled back, and it's two and two. If Iowa State, well, Iowa State will come to bat in this inning. Just a matter of whether they're playing tied or playing from behind. Spellhog minor Andrews do up this one. Hit high to left center, but it hangs up for Angelina Allen. And the inning comes to an end. Oklahoma State strands a runner in scoring position. We go tied to the bottom of the seventh. The CRV, Nissan Rogue, or Toyota RAV4. The Hyundai Tucson puts the other guys in their play. Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco, only at Taco Bell. Bottom of the seventh inning in Ames, a 2-2 tie between the Cyclones and the Cowgirls. Iowa State winners yesterday over the fifth-ranked team in the country. And Iowa State had the lead today before Jillian Poulard's two-run double in the fifth. Malaysia Ochoa has scored both runs for Iowa State with a pair of extra base hits, a homer and a double. And Carly Spellhog is hit by the first pitch. And Iowa State has its leadoff base runner aboard for the second straight inning. Really tough situation here for Spellhog. For Iowa State, you want Spellhog on the bases. She is your best base runner. You want her on the bases. She says she's good to go. So for Iowa State, that's great news, getting your leadoff runner on base. Ashley Miner was the hero yesterday. Scored both runs for Iowa State, including a solo homer. Her sixth of the year. She's 0 for 2 today. It's a ground ball up first. Foul. And right now we're in a situation where if Iowa State wins this game, you have to say the player of the game at this point is Malaysia Ochoa. Been outstanding defensively, been outstanding offensively. And if Oklahoma State wins this game, you have to say it's Poulard. I right. mean, she's been just web gem after web gem at third base and then the big hit. So we have two players who have really led us this game. And Miner is hit by the pitch. Back-to-back -back hit batsman. Puts two on and nobody out for Iowa State. and it puts a runner in scoring position, what would be the walk-off run. And just shocking here, Rosenberry has been on point these last six innings. She has attacked the zone. She's gotten the hitters to chase her stuff. She's been sending them down in order for the most part. And then this last inning, two runners on base right now. Ireland bus, pinch runs. For Iowa State. And this is a situation where I think the situation itself is just screaming sacrifice bunt. And it looks looks like Coach Kenny Gajewski is going to ask the umpires to review that last hit by pitch. We saw a reviewed hit by pitch last weekend as well, or maybe a couple weekends ago. 
it's not the same rules as baseball where you have to make an effort to get out of the way. You can stand right where you were or even lean into it as long as you're in the batter's box. Yeah, you just can't be over the plate. Right. So, and from up here, I don't think she was, but I, I, I do think it's definitely worth reviewing if you're Oklahoma State. The third review of this game. After none yesterday. I think if anything she leans that leg back a little bit so as long as she's in the batter's box to start yeah I don't think there's any anything there to be able to overturn that this might be a better angle well she does kind of lean it over but the plate is significantly further away from her left This shouldn't be one where they have to take a long look at this, right? I'll tell you what, right now in college softball, I love the fact that there is review because there are plays, you think about that play at third base earlier this game, 100% let's review it. But it almost feels like we're starting to review maybe a little bit too much this year. It's been a major talking point there's, across the country. There's been two plays now this game, the one that just happened with the lean in there, and then the other one on Poulard's double, if the runner left first early, where we're just adding delays into the game. And as I mentioned, I'm, I am a huge fan of review overall because I think, like I said, the play at third base could have gone either way. But in these situations, it just adds – such a long delay into the game and fans get less engaged players get less engaged and there's been talk too about the leaving early review especially since that's new to the game this year whether you know that's gamesmanship and should continue to be allowed as you get a look at Ireland bus who's running at first base Assuming this stance. I think there needs to be still an, a human element in the game. That's what the umpires are there for. And the Iowa State dugout, just as I was talking about, they're trying to get the crowd back in, engaged in this game. Everything just went quiet. You have two runners on base, and Coach Kenny Gajewski there using that challenge as a way to slow the momentum. Iowa State dugout leading the Cyclone power chance. As it stands, two runners on, nobody out. As Iowa State looks to walk off a series victory. And now on the other side, Orange power the chance. I guess this is one way to keep the crowds engaged. Have <laughs> chant battles? Yeah, chant battles. Why not? At the softball game, why not? It's 80 degrees out here, a beautiful day for softball. It's a 2-2 game in the bottom of the seventh. And this review is taking a long time. I jinxed it, didn't I? Said you know, it's not one you had to look at too long. They are still talking this over. Stick around tomorrow. Come right on back for game three of what has been an entertaining series between Iowa State and Oklahoma State. Cyclones took game one, two nothing yesterday. It's two, two in the bottom of the seventh today. Iowa State threatening to walk it off. Elsewhere in college softball, Baylor and Texas on the Longhorn Network, a First game that really was a blowout in Texas's favor, not necessarily what you'd expect from a talented Baylor squad. Every other game in the Big 12 has been close. That one was a 14 to one game. Between two ranked teams. So she'll stay at first. Two on, nobody out. 
for McKenna Andrews. And like I said, this situation screams sacrifice bunt. You would have to imagine in Oklahoma State, I mean, you had a long time there to talk these situations over. Andrews not really a hitter that hits with a ton of power. Oklahoma State corners are playing in pretty close. That is exactly what they are expecting. First pitch to Andrews. She squares to bunt, gets it down, and she is thrown out at first base. A successful sacrifice, 5-4. to four, Puts two runners in scoring position with one out for Camille Merritt. As I said, I, I love power hitting in the game of softball, but today the sacrifice bunts we have seen have came at such clutch times for both teams. McKenna Andrews there for Iowa State, and earlier in the game it was a lot for Oklahoma State, such a huge part of the game. And a visit to the circle here for Oklahoma State. It, Jamie Pinkerton was looking at his lineup card and talking to the home plate umpire, but it doesn't look like he's going to make a change. He did make a change there because Knowles was in for Marin behind the plate. Oh, sure, sure. So putting Marin back in to take the at-bat. So if this game does go into extra innings, it will be Marin behind the plate rather than Knowles. So in the batting lineup, no change. Knowles had not come to bat. She just caught in the previous inning. Camille Marin with two in scoring position and just one out. Fouls it off. That was a great swing on that pitch. She timed it up very, very well just underneath it. This Oklahoma State defense right now, it is do or die. You need the out at the plate. They are playing shallow, and in this situation as well, you're bringing your outfield in to avoid anything over their head. Because anything over their head is game over. Game over anyway. Yeah. Any Whether it's a sacrifice fly with spell hog speed, you know, if they catch it, it doesn't matter. So... You're playing to get the out and keep that runner at third. Deep fly ball left field. Ball game. Walk off home run, Camille Marin. Wow, what a way to end this game today. Camille Marin, we show the Baylor highlights from last year. Who was the home run hit by? Camille Marin. That was Iowa State's last ranked win in a series. They get a PN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. score the game. To score is six to three. It's your journey. Own every mile in the new Hyundai Elantra with America's best warranty. Lease an Elantra for $199 a month. Thousand bonus cash. Visit your Gulf Coast Hyundai dealer today. Kobe, why aren't you eating your Cinnabon pull apart? Well, I want to save the best part for last, but it's all the best part. I don't know where to begin. Toby, eat your breakfast. Maybe I just smell it. The best part of Wendy's new breakfast Cinnabon pull-apart is all the parts. I guess I'm not the easiest person to please. That's why I love Redfin. They show me homes that are perfect for me. Not too big, not too small. Yeah. It's like they know me. I mean, the bears love having me here. <sighs> We're like family. I know it sucks, but it's time for me to spread my wings and find a place of my own. Ooh. <gasps> Rapid rehydration with a specialized blend of five electrolytes and lower sugar. Hydration for every athlete, forever. Double miles on everything you buy and get access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Oh, yeah.